Hi folks, this is Klaus at Top Hydraulics. We will show you today how to manually close or emergency close the top on a Volkswagen EOS. We think it's a big deal because we haven't found any reference on how it's really done manually. You can see some videos that show how these tops are manually closed with a computer and that is assuming that your pump still works or that the other hydraulic components in the top haven't failed and that you have this computer or that your shop has this computer or in most cases that you go to the Volkswagen dealer and pay a lot of money to have this done. Uh, we think we found a very reasonable way for you to do this truly manually. You don't need many tools. Uh, actually what we found you need is um, possibly a couple of flat screwdrivers to get behind um, some panel pieces and you need a uh, roughly 10 inch or so um, small pry bar and a Torx T15 wrench that I don't have in my hand right now, a Torx T15 wrench to just undo a couple bolts in the trunk. And um, the big thing is we're showing you how to step by step remove trim pieces to get at the critical places here that allow you to unlock the front section of the trunk lid then flip the trunk lid back that allow you to um, later on secure the uh, top in its up position uh, by uh, pushing down the uh, uh, frame locking mechanism in the middle of the frame and uh, altogether I'll say it one more time it's a big deal we're really happy we're able to show this. Obviously, more or less obviously, it's obvious to us, you need to open the pressure relief valve and the trunk will show you access to the uh, components in the trunk um, where we again unscrew those two Torx T15 uh, bolts in the trunk and um, uh, where we create access to the pump where we open the pressure relief valve to then be able to manually move the hydraulics and uh, let's take it from here let's move on to the trunk so here we are in the uh, trunk of the volkswagen eos uh, let me pull up the carpeted uh, panel that uh, is above the spare tire and here you see the hydraulic pump it is under this gray foam cover actually uh, this car is missing a small bracket that is on top of here that uh, is also easy to remove so for access to the pump, all we have to do is pull this plastic panel up and then expose the pump inside of this uh, foam housing. To pull the access cover up, you actually, we have loosened it already, it only takes pulling up in all directions. Uh, keep in mind that the uh, this trim panel is normally tucked under the weather seal, so um, you it will pull out of the weather seal all by itself once you start pulling up on all ends. The, um, one of the important things is disconnect the wire for the connector for the interior light here for the trunk illumination. That connector is easily uh, disconnected by pushing two tabs together and simply pulling it out of the light. So here I take out that rear trim panel and now we are almost at the pump. There is another plastic bracket on here that we can uh, pull up on. It's got two little release panel tabs in the rear. You pull those tabs forward. Now you can push down on this and get it out of the bottom uh, mounting bracket as well and uh, lastly we take off the foam cover now we finally see this hydraulic pump so here's what we were after the manual pressure relief valve on the hydraulic pump it uses a six millimeter allen wrench or a torx t40 will work as well you want to unscrew this counterclockwise i'll loosen it up first here's a half turn and i'll give it another half meaning one, one and a half. If you were to turn it farther at about two turns, you'll see that it gets harder to loosen it. You don't want to go past that point or you'll damage the valve. So let's bring it back to about one and a half turns open and we take it from here.
So the trunk lid is open and we want to get access at the latch that is behind these trim panels. Now I have cheated a little bit. I have loosened these trim panels up already because I want to first show you the tabs inside these panels that kind of are the secret to uh, removing them. So let me quickly take these things out and then show you how it's done. Um, we remove this front trim panel and we move this middle trim panel to get access to this locking mechanism that I'll show you later um, how to um, unlock it. Now we have two trim pieces here. One is the larger one in the front. The important thing on it to show you is this tab, this hook shaped tab that goes into a metal retainer in the front here. And the easier way to get this, the front of this panel unhooked is to push down on it so it gets out of this tab. And keep in mind, if you end up breaking a tab, you can glue it. So uh, don't obsess over it. You might get a little bit frustrated. Uh, patience is key. And remember, if something, uh, if a tab breaks, you can glue it later on with um, uh, epoxy and uh, it'll be almost good as new. Not the end of the world if something breaks here. Um, key is you first push down the front of the larger trim panel so that you can push it forward. That will in turn, oops, I'm turning things wrong here, that will give us just enough room to uh, get the middle piece out of the way. This middle piece, uh, its important feature is this tab under the roof of this, under the middle of it, and the rear tab. The rear tab here locks it into a hole back in this channel, and that does need to be pried up before you can move this piece forward and out of its um, round uh, bolt-like retainer here. So when the rear gets pried up and pushed forward enough, then this piece comes free, but only after the front piece has been pushed forward enough to even be able to push this thing out of the way. Here are the pieces secured in place and I pushed down on the front so that I can get this piece pushed forward enough to have a gap here that allows me to first lever up in the rear have clearance and then let me stick a small screwdriver in here as a spacer then I, you see that these two pieces are still connected. That means I need to get my front piece freed up some more. And I might have to stick a screwdriver in between here until there's enough gap to get these guys separated. The front piece is out of the way. Now I can move my rear piece and now I have access to this lock. Next step is unlatch the front section of the uh, trunk lid. For that I use the uh, angled pry bar and it's not very hard to do this. You could theoretically use a large flat screwdriver. I'm not a big fan of that because that uh, thing might slip too easily. So I prefer the larger blade and the angle on this tool to simply do the following. I push the tool in this gap between the ball joints uh, collar and uh, the cylinder housing itself, meaning the edge of this tool pushes rather at the end of the cylinder shaft. Now I lean my body into it and push forward. Now what I want to say is you want to avoid tool slipping and stabbing things all over or uh, hurting yourself while uh, a tool slips. So easy does it. 
lean into it, push forward. Now at this point, I need to lean most of my body weight into it, but you can do it. Oh, just go easy. Try not to have tools slipping too much so you don't hurt yourself or the car. Um, it's easier than it looks. Same thing on the other side. And uh, after that, we'll move on to the next step. So the front section is unlocked. We next close the trunk lid, flip the um, trunk module or the trunk lid section backward. Then we lift the roof. After the roof has been lifted, we uh, show you how to undo some Torx bolts uh, to get t um, the nylon tension cables loose and so that we can, after that, get access on the inside to lock the rear frame. And uh, I just wanted to tell you about uh, closing the roof. You want to make sure that your windows are down and uh, you need at least two people to lift this roof. The roof is pretty heavy. Um, two people, two strong people can lift this roof with a lot of moaning. Three people is better, four people is ideal. Now we're going to show you uh, how to do it with three people. Um, and um, you will see the roof moving fairly slowly. That is partially because there's hydraulic fluid moving through these tiny hoses. So everything is damp and it does not move super fast. But um, again, it takes some muscle to move this heavy top. The pump, amazingly, has only about a half horsepower, but with that, it's everything is levered just right that uh, the, the hydraulic cylinders are mounted such, uh, the kinetics in this frame are such that this half horsepower pump has a fairly easy time moving the top up. By the way, it's an awesome pump. It has been very well designed, uh, but they do fail with time. Again, as I said, we fix these pumps. Now, let's get back to the subject here. We move back uh, the trunk module we simply lift up by the trunk lid move it back there we go this way the trunk lid is up and a third person can get in here and push under the bottom while two people lift up on the side we try to get our hands in under the top middle kind of and under the rear and start lifting and keep moving slowly. You see that the top twists a little bit, so you want to be fairly even in the way you apply the force here. Once we're at the higher spot, we stop the top a little bit, and we make sure that all cloth uh, clears the frame, that nothing gets tangled. We now let the top simply drop into place and uh, next we show you how to do and how to undo these torx bolts for the tension cables next step is undoing the uh, nylon ca tension cables on an uh, inside uh, hinge cover and uh, if we follow from the middle of the trunk to the side of these uh, main hinges look down here on the bottom here is a screw that we remove on either side i'm showing you the left side obviously we want to do the same thing on the right side too and there goes my screwdriver actually this is a uh, bit driver with a torx t15 a bit on it and just showing you where it goes we'll show you again from another perspective that makes it a little bit easier to see how these bolts are undone or let's just get it done now no need for the other perspective this is easy enough that bolt is undone we want to make sure we don't lose it it is actually on top of a single uh, what do you call this ore um, and that below it has a double ore and uh, it'll make sense when you see it in order to unlock the roof um, side member um, after we have released the strings on the bottom we also want to unclip this clip here that um, will then allow us to pull the cloth cover for the roof members aside and get access to the 
roof locking mechanism. Torx bolt has been undone to get tension out of these uh, nylon cables inside. I have also already unhooked this strap here that um, goes around the rear roof uh, member. And uh, we've shown you a different perspective of unhooking this uh, strap. Again, it uh, is undone simply by opening up that clasp in the rear you have to kind of feel your way around the rear to unhook this clasp and uh, now that this is loose we can secure it above the uh, rear headrest uh, that gives us access finally to this um, rear roof member locking mechanism and you see here at my fingertip the end of a hydraulic cylinder that is a spherical ball joint and uh, that cylinder when it's fully extended will actually move this mechanism down we have to simulate this um, uh, movement with our pry bar all we have to do is get this rod end down something like a three-quarter inch for that we lever our pry bar under the roof the metal frame and there we go that's all we repeat the same thing on the other side so we have just locked this section now all that's left to do is open the trunk lid and on both left side and right side latch these uh, uh, forward frame locks of the trunk lid. Um, in order to do that I use my trusted pry bar, push against the rod end basically towards the inside of the trunk. I'll have to lean into it a little bit to push it and next we'll show you close up on how the uh, levering is done over here to get over the toughest spot that takes a little bit of muscle and careful movement. Let's uh, come on, uh, zoom in. So here's the trick. Down here is a bolt that we can lever the bottom of our pry bar over. So I hook the bottom of the pry bar behind this uh, bolt and I have the curved section of the pry bar right behind the ball joint and now I carefully force this cylinder backward. Now uh, watch out, move slowly and uh, make sure your tool doesn't slip because uh, you don't want to damage anything or hurt yourself. And uh, we're in pretty good shape here. Didn't have to push all that hard. It's rather a matter of finesse then force if you get the right leverage on here like we did between this bolt and the end of the ball joint on the cylinder then you can force this latch closed fairly easily. We do the same thing on the other side and uh, with that we're done. So both sides have been latched this, this way we close our trunk lid. You will see here the trunk lid engaging, which means the top has been successfully closed manually. We are all done. Ta-da!